Good morning. It's a beautiful day in the Sand Hills. We're glad you're with us this morning. Welcome to worship. If you're visiting, sign our uh, guest cards there, if you would, please. Uh, highlight a couple of announcements. want to welcome Jonathan, our guest musician. Uh, we've got some other visitors here. And I've, my, if my eyes do not deceive me, we have three retired ministers worshiping with us this morning. So one of y'all come on up and you can do the sermon here in just a few minutes. <laughs> welcome. It's always glad to have the clergy with us. Um, Bible study. They were going to start it, and they were going to do it at Panera, but I hadn't been in the new Panera. It's not that big, so they're going to do it in the parlor. So the, the women's book Bible study is in the parlor there. So take note of that. The choir's back. They had rehearsal on Wednesday, and they'll be back in. And then you see the calendar of events there, things going on. So uh, once again, any other announcements or concerns? We're glad you're here. Let's turn our hearts and our minds to God.
And now, as you're able, let's stand together for our call to worship. Let's join together. Oh, Lord, how lovely is your dwelling place. Our hearts sing for joy to the living God. Happy are those whose strength is in you. The Lord is a sun and a sheep. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. Oh, worship the King, all glorious above. Let's sing together. Trusting in the tender mercies of our God, I invite you to join with me in this prayer of confession. Let's pray together. Loving God, we confess we take your word too lightly. Forgive us for hearing your word without welcoming it to transform our lives. The noises in our busy lives distract us from hearing your word. We choose to follow ways which are self-serving while ignoring the Spirit to lead us into new paths. In your mercy, forgive us and help us welcome the Spirit to shape our lives according to your word. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. The saying is worthy of our full acceptance that Christ Jesus came to forgive us. And God is more than willing to forgive us anytime we confess our sins. 
Christ Jesus came not to condemn us, but to forgive us and restore us. So in the name of Jesus Christ, accept that forgiveness this morning. Thanks be to God, we're forgiven. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Please stand up and share a little bit. Another special day in the life of this congregation. Uh, a child coming into the kingdom of God. And uh, I'm just going to note that we have a great grandmother, a grandmother, and a mother with us today. Isn't that special? The generations do pass on, don't they? What do we do? We do. We baptize because that's what our Lord told us to do. Baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And when we do that, that's what this is all about this day. And so it's the desire of Christian and Hannah for Hazel to receive the sacrament of baptism during this worship time. And we're delighted. Uh, Jeff Hill, our elder. <laughs> Hi. Upon the, upon the request of Christian and Hannah, the session is with Reverend Hazel to receive the sacrament of baptism this morning. It is with great joy. Folks, this is God's show. This is God's action. We're just obeying the Lord to ask the Spirit to come into this child, to claim this child from now into eternity. And that's the beauty of it. And so we come believing and trusting that this is what the Lord would have us to do as we rejoice this day. So, Christian Hannah, is it your desire for Hazel to be baptized? Through that covenant, they make a commitment, you make a commitment. And all of those commitments are under the umbrella of God's commitment to his people. Do you affirm your own faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Do you? Do you claim God's covenant promise? And do you look to faith in Jesus Christ for your salvation? And do you claim God's covenant promise on Hazel's behalf? And do you look to faith in Jesus Christ for her salvation as you do your own? Do you? You promised in humble reliance upon God's grace to set before Hazel an example of the new life in Jesus Christ. Do you? And you promised to pray with and for Hazel and to bring her up in the knowledge and the love of God. Do you? It's your turn, folks. <laughs>
I'd ask you to bow your heads and bow your hearts, please. Oh, Lord, again we come because we've been invited and we come with you because you have initiated this promise to us. And so we pray that by this water, it would be a sign and seal upon Hazel this day and forevermore. For this we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Yeah, come on over to the water. Hazel, <coughs> Lily, Hand, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the mark of the cross be upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. 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 Let's walk up here. Will she walk with you? She will. This is Hazel. Y'all go down there. Go straight on down that aisle. Yeah. the minister to be careful there I'd ask you one more time if you would bow your heads and your hearts, please. Loving God, the family's a little bigger. The kingdom's a little larger. And that's good. And we have a part in that. And so we pray that the promises that we have made and that have been made this day would be honored by the presence of your spirit in our lives to do that. And we will give you the glory and the praise, we promise, through Christ our Lord. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from Proverbs 9, verses 1 through 12. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, Turn in here. To those without sense, she says, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. Whoever corrects a scoffer wins abuse. Whoever rebukes the wicked gets hurt. A scoffer who is rebuked will only hate you. The wise, when rebuked, will love you. Give instruction to the wise, and they will become wiser still. Teach the righteous, and they will gain in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. For by me your days will be multiplied, and years will be added to your life. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. If you scoff, you alone will bear it. This is the word of the Lord.
O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander, and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees, when I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, when Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then i shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God, how great Thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. And how great that was. Thank you. Erlene, you did good training him from a young age. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. Second lesson's Ephesians, the fifth chapter there. I'm going to read five verses. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's the word of the Lord. God. You know, some of our members were going to start that Bible study of Mitch Album's book, Have a Little Faith. And, you know, Album, he was a sports writer, but he became popular with that Tuesdays for Maury, which was turned into a TV movie. The book recounts how on Tuesdays he would visit Maury, a 78-year-old man dying of Lou Gehrig's disease. In one of the conversations, Album was asked what he would do if he had one more day to live. Maury kind of gives him some instructions. He says, you know, our culture doesn't encourage us to think about such ultimate things, career, family, all of that stuff creeps in before you're ready to die. 
meeting the mortgage, getting a new car, fixing the radiator. We're involved with trillions of small acts just to keep going. So we don't get in the habit of standing back and looking at our lives and saying, is this all? Is this all I want? Is something missing? And then he says to Mitch, Mitch, you need someone to probe you in that direction. This morning, Paul's probing us. Be careful how you live. Make the most of the time. Be careful how we live. Paul puts a positive spin on careful living. Take advantage of the opportunities. Understand what God is doing. Get on with everyday living. Make the most of your time. Wow. But you know, our challenge is, it's easy to kind of drift along with the currents of the culture, unreflective, not thinking about the big picture issues and our choices that we have. You see, as followers of Jesus, we're encouraged to be questioning, and reflective, and probing, but above all, be careful and wise in these days. Today we hear words of caution, but also words of wisdom, encouraging us to live full lives, carefully, wisely. And to do this, we have choices to make, while not letting those choices be driven by the wind. You know, the book of Proverbs has a whole lot to say about making wise choices as opposed to the foolish ones. That's where wisdom kicks in. The scene in that chapter 9 is a city where on the street people are passing back and forth, being enticed from both sides by two different voices. On one side, they're being approached by Lady Wisdom. She has built a large house, prepared a good solid meal, meat, bread, and wine for anyone who will accept her invitation to dine. Simple meal, good meal, but all who accept it will grow and become stronger by accepting what is offered. They'll learn to live and walk in the way of wisdom. Well, on the other side of the street is an invitation by Lady Folly, who promises pleasure, enjoyment. Her invitation is more enticing. But what Lady Folly doesn't mention is that those who accept this invitation will be taking a step towards destruction. This passage is so full of allegory and poetic images. Wisdom is personified as coming at a feast. Come on in, eat the bread, drink the wine I've mixed. Come on in, sit down, feast on wisdom. Foolishness also wants to have our company. The enticement, though, is a little bit more meager. It leads to ruin. But think about this this morning. Who would have stepped over on that side of the street when wisdom's on this side of the street? Wisdom has much more to offer. However, we're left to make the choices. Paul reminds us, be careful how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise. He says, don't be foolish. You know, sometimes I'd like to think it's just as simple as that, a choice. I'm not so sure it is. Simple either or, a binary situation, choose one or the other, make your pick, wisdom or folly. Wise living comes through gaining more information and knowledge. But that doesn't bring true wisdom. We're in an information glut. The data, the knowledge is overwhelming. Trying to keep up is like that proverbial saying, trying to drink out of the fire hose. In our information overload culture, here's my question. Are we becoming wiser? Heidi Husted says the subtitle of a book sums up our situation. The Darth of Wisdom in an Information Society. As one observer says, we're in a wisdom famine. Wisdom seems to be in short supply these days. And I believe wisdom is much needed. If we're going to navigate our way through these challenging times, we need wisdom. And the way forward is not a simple choice for convenience or practicality or pragmatism. Wisdom comes slower. It goes deep. And it lasts longer. 
And oftentimes we grow in wisdom as we get rid of some of that data, that information that we've gathered forever. <laughs> it allows us time to do what? To listen, to learn, practice wisdom. God desires for us to mature beyond head knowledge so we can live carefully and wise, move beyond the abstract to apply our beliefs which guide our daily living. That may sound simple, but you know, some folks come here expecting to get every answer to life. And some folks don't come here because they're tired of the church always telling them how to live. Look at our current state of affairs. How many folks don't want to hear from other people or any source of authority telling them how to live? We come under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Proverbs doesn't tell us what to do. It says we have choices. Be careful. Examine your life. The quality of your living. Someone has pointed out that Proverbs are short sentences based on long experiences. You see, as we integrate wisdom from the word into our choices and our decisions, we, we rise to a higher quality of living. Wisdom helps us discern how we integrate God's word into practical everyday living. And wisdom prods us to reflect and expand so it's crucial, folks, that our lived experiences become a part of our expanding wisdom. Two teachers were applying for the same vice principal position at a local high school. One had been teaching for a total of eight years, and the other had been teaching for a total of 20 years. Everyone expected the teacher with the greater experience, the 20 years, to get the job, but when the decision was made, it was the person with eight years teaching who was chosen. The teacher overlooked for the job complained bitterly. I've got 20 years teaching to her eight. I'm vastly more qualified. The school board's reply, yes, sir, you do have 20 years of teaching to her meager eight, but where she has eight years of experience, you have one year of experience 20 times. <laughs> Gaining wisdom is a long haul pursuit which involves integrating and following Jesus' example to be in the world but not of the world. Wisdom transcends knowing and moves to doing, reflecting and integrating our individual and communal experiences in every way. There's a fable about a young man who was standing on a street corner. He opened his coat and he cried, look at my heart, look at my perfect heart. A crowd soon gathered around him and stood in awe of a heart without a blemish perfect, complete in every way. Then an old gentleman walked by. He paused and asked what all the commotion was about. When he heard the young man proudly cry, look at my perfect heart, the old man pushed his way in the front of the crowd to look closer. When he saw the young man's heart, he scolded him, son, that's not a perfect heart. If you want to see a perfect heart, you need to see mine. With that, the old man opened his coat showed his heart, revealed an old heart, with bumps, and holes, pieces broken off. The crowd began to laugh at the old man. He raised his hand and said, whoa, 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 whoa. You see this spot right here? That's when I met my first love. Oh, how the sun shone on that day, how bright the colors of the universe were, how sweet the singing of the birds in the trees. What a wonderful moment it was. Ah, but see this hole? That's when me and my first love broke up. How it pained me the hole once ran much deeper, but over the years I've managed to fill it in a lot. See this bump? That's when I met the woman who became my life partner. Oh, what a wonderful life we had year after year of shared companionship, laughter, tears, and joy. This spot is when we hit a rough patch, but we moved on. Over here, this place, this is where 
a piece of my heart got broken off. That's when she passed away. Oh, the ache she took a part of my heart with her. And this bump over here, well, that was when we wanted to begin our family. You'll notice there's a hole beside it. We learned we couldn't bear our own children, how hard and painful that was. But this spot, oh, that's when we adopted our daughter, our very own beautiful little girl to raise on our own. So this spot grows bigger and bigger. He went on to describe good spots. When he finished, the crowd was silent. He said, you see, son, turning to the young man with the unblemished heart, yours is not a perfect heart, for it has not lived. It has not been touched with joy and tears and laughter, love and pain and anguish, hardship, and yes, celebration. When you're old like me, you'll be able to look upon your heart and say, yes, that's a perfect heart. Gaining a wise heart requires freedom to make mistakes. Wisdom comes through learning as we live. You probably heard the saying, every person is a fool for a few minutes every day. And wisdom consists in not exceeding that limit. <laughs> Choosing wisdom more than folly. We never quite arrive at a point where we can claim we are wise. Because we can always wise up, can't we? How? I think the lesson in Proverbs says, by spending time time in wisdom's household. The point being, those truly wise continue to come to wisdom's banquet. The scripture says, give instruction to the wise and they will become wiser. Teach the righteous and they will gain in learning. But folks, let me tell you this morning, wisdom is not as hard as we might imagine. It's not off there some esoteric knowledge or information. I'll close. Some of you may remember the name Ann Landers. You can nod your head if you do. For 56 years, the Ask Ann Landers was a syndicated advice column, a regular feature in many newspapers throughout North America. Owing to its popularity, Ann Landers, who was actually a fictional character, became something of a, a national institution, a cultural icon. In one of her columns, she offered this advice from a man in Indiana. Dear Ann Landers, my grandmother never went to school, but she was very wise. Before she died 60 years ago, she handed me a little slip of paper with all the advice you will ever need to live a good life. And this was what was on that slip of paper. Wash what is dirty. Water what is dry. Heal what is wounded. Warm what is cold. Guide what goes off the road. Love people who are least loved because they need it the most. Maybe wisdom isn't that hard. Let's pray. Oh Lord, teach us to gain wise hearts. Teach us to submit to your authority, to welcome your word in our lives, to guide us in paths so that we can live carefully and wise in these days. And help us to learn from what we experience. Help us to lean on one another as we learn. And help us to remember, O oh Lord, you are the truly wise one. And to you alone we give praise and honor and glory this day. Amen. If you're able, let's stand together in our affirmation of faith. It's from Psalm 111.
I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have good understanding. Let's sing together 187, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. seated if you would and our ushers would they come forward to receive our gifts our tithes our offerings
loving God, from your bounty we've received, to whom much is given, much is expected, and we offer these gifts to you. May it be a sign that we're wise because our hearts are in the right place. May it be a sign that we love you, we care about your word being spread throughout the lands. So help us to use it wisely for your good and your glory. That is what we would ask in Christ's name. Amen. we come to our time of prayer, we want to remember the Laswell family and the Troutman family, if their losses at this time, and their healing, and their hope is renewed. Any other concerns that me? Well, I'd ask you again, bow your heads and your hearts. Well, Lord, we, we thank you we're wise enough to turn to you and help us to keep turning to you day in and day out, moment by moment. Trusting and believing that you will guide us, that you will provide for our every need in order that we might be the disciples you've called us to be in Jesus Christ. Loving, serving, caring, compassionate. Apart from you, we can do little, but with you all things are truly possible. So we come this morning and we ask that you would work in and through us by the power of the Spirit to do your will, to do your good, to bear witness to truth here. And, oh, Lord, we know it's not just about us. So we come as those who intercede. We live to you, to your throne of grace, all of our sister churches. We ask your blessing upon them, upon their ministry, their mission, their outreach, their service, their worship this day. We come, oh, Lord, and intercede for all of those that are seeking to, to raise up children and train them in the way so they will not depart from it. Not just in our faith communities, but in our school systems as they began to wrestle with what to do, how to do it. Oh, Lord, we need your wisdom. We need it deep, and we need it wide, and we need it. So we ask for it. Give wisdom to all of those who are in positions of power or authority to make decisions, make choices. And we ask that you would guide them humbly. We do remember, oh, Lord, this family that lost loved ones, those that are continuing to grieve over the loss of loved ones. So be our comfort, be our source, that balm and gilly that you promised to be to help us to find that healing and health and wholeness, not just individually, but together as the family of faith here called Bethesda. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the blessings, the freedoms that we have, the joys that we endure. And we thank you for our hearts. They may not be perfect, but you're in them. And we give you the praise and the glory this day. For we pray in that name, the name above all names of Jesus Christ, who taught all of his disciples to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus shall reign where the sun. Let's stand together as you're able.
On this beautiful Sabbath day, go and rest, enjoy your family, your loved ones, and go and serve the Lord with gladness. Go in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.